All right, and we are live. Hello, everybody. Hey, hey, hey. And today we are once again playing Call of Cthulhu uh, with the role-playing rats. We have uh, fives here playing Clarence, the marble artist. And we have Paul, the boxer, who uh, both had a lot of fun last time. At least I think they did. Uh, I had a lot of fun. And uh, the first thing that we need to take care of today is that we have a little bit of a retcon that we have to do. Um, I kind of mentioned at the last end of the last one that the date seemed a bit off, uh, as we had, um, March instead of May, uh, and we are currently on May 16th, getting on toward, you know, afternoonish uh, with all the travel and everything, uh, but, uh, Miss Boyle, uh, let out a date that she was going to meet Poppy and, um, Cedric, uh, and they didn't show up, and that was in fact the day before you guys were there. So what we'll do is we'll put you back to where you are inside the house, still sitting at a table, sipping on some tea next to the wonderful statues, and uh, we'll go from there. Uh, anything you two would like to point out or anything before we really get started? Not good here. <laughs> All right, so that's where we will set our scene, is right there in uh, Fanny's house, and you are sitting there with her, and she has just told you uh, that she was supposed to meet Cedric and Poppy, because they were going to do something to Harold, who is Cedric's brother, um, who did some not-so-nice things growing up to Cedric. Uh, and, uh, what do you guys have? So she, we'll just say that like that. She's like, yeah, I was supposed to meet him yesterday, uh, on the 15th, uh, but they never showed up. Well, he sounds like a real piece of work. This Harold, was that his name? Harold? Uh, yeah, yes, Harold. Yeah, he sounds like a messed up kid. I don't, I don't like it so much. I think, uh. Maybe he's got a little something to do with what's going on yesterday. Um, but uh, Clarence, how's that? Does that line up with all any of the dates from the? You got the journal. You got all the notes. Yeah, that definitely lines up with what I'm hearing. Um, really curious though, uh, Miss Boyle, what do you have any idea what exactly they were planning to do? We've seen references to. You know, tomorrow's the day when Harold gets what's coming to him when the monster gets his due. Um, do you have any idea what was planned? Like the actual uh punishment? Uh I I didn't get a chance to talk about them specifically. Like I mentioned, um Harold uh slighted me before, so I was kind of in line with uh figuring out how to how to make him pay for that but again they didn't show up so i don't specifically know what they uh what they were planning on doing i think they were going to tell me the plan at that point in time but mm. i was certainly certainly behind it okay so a need to know basis but harold definitely i mean i'm not questioning that he deserved what was coming to him i don't think uh, polly here would either but it was really just more of a, just to give us some guidance on what we may or may not be walking into, or the aftermath of what we may or may not be walking into. Yeah, you mentioned you had some notes or something? Uh, well, I... Yeah, we spoke to um, to Poppy's mom, and uh, she had been encouraging us to take a look at some of the things that Poppy had been involving herself with. You know, those, uh, these extracurricular activities, so as it were. Uh, and uh, from that, we've seen them maybe, you know, she's got the, she's keeping a calendar of sorts, uh, activities getting up to, you know. Ah, okay. Okay. Yep, yep. Um, well, 
like that if you if you need anything and again we we chatted about uh you know we have our uh women's rights meetings uh if you would like to show up to those you're more than welcome to you mentioned you might you might show up you might not that's perfectly okay uh yeah no i'm pretty sure i mean let's be honest uh fanny i'm pretty sure y'all you guys uh, you ladies got this in the bag now you know like that's on its way you know it's coming it's uh you know it'll be here any day now the the votes is here you got it oh absolutely absolutely i'm sure of it as well yeah uh, no that'll be all for me i'm i'm happy for us to take our leave here paul the day is you know, we're still in the morning, but the day will get away from us quick. And I know Mrs. Carmine is anxious to anxious to get some hard leads on Poppy. Yes, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, again, if there's anything else I can do to help, uh, please feel free to, to stop by. Uh, and if you uh, need to chat with me later, you know, you know where to find me. No doubt I'll be seeing you around, Fanny. It's been a pleasure, Miss Boyle. All right. Uh, and she'll have uh, the maid show you out of the house uh, as she goes to do whatever she was doing to begin with. Um, in and her Asian loungewear. In her Asian loungewear. You are absolutely right with uh, the statue that is there. Uh, very interesting mm. statue. So you two find yourself out in front of the Boyle residence. What would you like to do? You had... Uh, I can kind of go over some of the stuff you had found out if you need a refresher on it. Otherwise, I uh... don't know about Paul, but I was taking some notes here. And so we've got the journals we've got or the journal, I should say, and we've got some of the more critical pages here, dog eared. But we've you know, we've been to the house. We've spoken to Mrs. Carmine. We've been to now Fanny Boyle because Paul had a connection there. And so I feel like our next step is probably. Um, Hey, Polly, so, you know, we've we've done sort of the deeds. We've been to the houses. Uh, do you think it's time we go across town? Have we sort of cleared the, uh, you know, cleared the, the riffraff, cleared the chaff, so to speak? You know, are we through the minor details? Or do we need to do some more some more shopping here first? Uh, I think uh, I think we could maybe go down, you know. Uh, if, if what you're talking about is going down to the, the flower shop, that's, that's an option. Um, what? The flower shop may have some more leads for us, but if we think about uh, the journal, there was the the refractory, um, the the yeah, rectory. The, yeah, yeah, that's the one. That's the one. Uh, so you know, it, yeah. there may be clues at the flower shop, but I don't think that's kind of the last stop. If you know what I'm saying, I, I'm not sure. I could really use a drink, man. Holy cow! It's five o'clock somewhere, I, I, right? Clarence, I'm, maybe I haven't been paying attention. Maybe you haven't paying attention. I was under the impression that the uh, the brick door that they're going to open is in the flower shop. Somebody said it was like some sort of a storage room or something like that, and that's what they were convinced of. And Poppy's all like, no, no, it's got such pretty symbols, so it's got to be special. This sounds like such a bad idea. Okay, so the it sounds like the flower shop should be our next stop then, huh? Well, I mean, on the opposite side of that, what I was going to say is, uh, you know, maybe you could stop by. You know, we've got a couple of these pictures here. they got some symbology on them. We maybe could take them to somebody. You know who to read the stuff? That's definitely some, like, Egyptian hieroglyphs or some shit. Um, we could maybe hit up, you know, somebody in the know, you know, go in armed with a little bit of information. You know, you don't got to rush in all the time. Sometimes it's important to, you know, sort of study up on who you're going up against. Uh, okay. In this Hot case. Kettle. Hey. Study up. What are you talking about? Uh, no, I'm just saying, you know, you could get a little information. You could dig. You could learn your opponent and find his weaknesses. And in this case, oh, our opponent goodness. might be a door or our opponent might be a uh, poke-ass Harold. And I'll beat the shit out of him. Yeah, I, you do that. All right. So I'll leave Harold to you and I'll deal with the door. Um, Lorekeeper, can I make uh, assumptions about the past here? Um I feel like Clarence might know like someone at the university, maybe a professor, since he is a, a studied artist and kind of in that eclectic community. So do you think I might know somebody or do we got to go about this the old fashioned way, just from a character background perspective? Uh, you would definitely have um, some connections in the area to various people. Uh, you do know okay. that in the uh, journal as well, Poppy did write about a bookstore. 
uh, that she was getting a lot of their information from, and in fact, mentioned that it was their little research spot. Um, okay, ding, ding. So, all right, I tell you what, Polly, we're going to go check out the bookstore that Poppy wrote about. I don't remember what page it was on, but I think you remember, right? We, she was. She mentioned there was a bookstore that they had started using near the flower hey. shop that Cedric introduced her to. So let's go cruise over there first. We can see what other books or maybe what they were referencing, and maybe that's uh, maybe then we can find someone in the know at the shop, or you know, there's a few people in the artistic community. I'm a sculptor. Marble sculptor, just in case for you forgot. I know you can afford one of my pieces one of these days. I did forget. You're right. That's oh. I, don't, I don't often think about what it is that you do. I bet you don't. Um, but yeah, so, you know, there's uh, actually a guy who specializes in Egyptian architecture or Egyptian art inspired architect. I don't know. He's really into some of the deep stuff. He's not into really the more uh, religious side of it. Just, you know, pyramids, sphinxes, that kind of thing. But he may be able to lead us somewhere. I, you know, it sounds like a uh, leg to pull, if you, you know, know the expression. It's uh, something we can maybe uh, dig into. He's got uh, yeah. some experience. No, I don't know anything about it this. Dog. Hey, hey, that ain't uh, any part of the game. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right, so I think, um, Lore Keeper, our next stop will be the bookshop. Perfect. So you guys uh, are kind of on the street. Uh, there are different ways to get down there. Uh, the bookshop, uh, flower shop area is a little ways away. Typically, a lot of the people in the area will take the trolley down that way, specifically. But there's, you could also take a cab. You could, if you have one of your own vehicles, you could certainly take that. How do you want to get get down there? Uh, I think cab for me. Uh, I was going to suggest the trolley. Oh, sure. Trolley works. That, that that works too, but I don't think I have a car. I'm not sure Paul does. Uh, Paul does not have a car. All right, you guys uh, kind of move away from the house. Uh, it doesn't take you too long. It's just a short walk away where you can hit one of the stations for the trolleys. They kind of go around the city in various places, so it's not it's not very long before you can hit one of those. You're probably gonna based on the fact you went out to. The Boyle residence, you're going to have to make a connection. Um, so uh, after a short while, you get on a trolley. It's a, you know, nominal fee to to get it. Um, and shortly thereafter, you've hit the station where you're going to get on the next trolley uh, to go down to the flower shop. Uh, as you're waiting there, you know, waiting for the trolley to get there, uh, you see a guy kind of in a alleyway next to the the trolley station and uh, noticing him he looks up at you and waves you over is he selling something does he have a stand what's this and guy it, look like is before he just, I just go over there looking at either of us in particular uh d- specifically at you two for sure for sure hmm um I would probably look at uh, at Clarence and like nudge him, um, and then I don't remember if we established this uh, during our during our play here, but uh, for the uh, the audience as well, like you know, Polly uh, tends to wear um, a largely simple sort of uh, suit, but also as often in a uh, big fur coat, uh, which he thinks is you know the the height of fashion and just wonderful. Uh, so he probably like fluffs it up a little bit and is like, ah, normally I, uh, I, I've done a lot of business in alleyways before. I don't see this as any particular issue. I'm not particular word. You are so strange. Uh, and Clarence will, you know, check to make sure he's not about to miss the train and then kind of, uh, you know, Hey man, what's, uh, Hey, so what, the- what can I do you for? Yep, the gentleman that's that's waving you over is wearing a, you know, fairly decent clothes, uh, wearing a trench coat type of setup that uh, is typical around that, that day and age, and a nice kind of fedora type of hat, and kind of motions you over and, and goes down in the alleyway a little bit. 
I got I got something to talk to you about. Okay. Hey, talking my language now. Oh boy, what are you selling? We got a train coming here, a trolley coming here. Yeah, about that. Uh, you see, as you guys get in the alleyway, um, another gentleman kind of comes in behind you as well. Uh, yeah, so can we do a, a psychology roll sort of immediately? Be like, is this is this a uh, just a ruse for an ambush? Uh, you may certainly roll the dice. Rolling the dice is all sorts of fun. We rolled the dice by walking into the alley. Oh no, Meetings? absolutely not. <laughs> yeah, so you, the dice do not like me. Yeah, so you you have the idea that certainly he <laughs> he's there just to just to chat with you for a second. Clarence, if you'd like to take a roll for that as well, you may certainly do so. I feel yeah, I mean Clarence is uh he's an older guy, so I feel like this isn't gonna be his first rodeo. You know, he's got an itch in the back of his brain. Oh, so close. Uh, nope, definitely not. Yep. And you both are, are willingly going into this alleyway. Uh, everything's fine. Everything's fine. Man. So you get... So you see the oh, thing is what? So walking into the alleyway, you get in, you know, 15, 20 feet or so. And he kind of stops there as you kind of get closer. Gentleman walks in, in behind you. Seems a bit odd, but you guys are like, you know, this this seems perfectly normal. <clears throat> the gentleman in front is like, so I see you've been, uh, you two been hanging out by, uh, by that boil lady. Oh, you mean Fanny? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've, you've been, uh, well, you've been paying attention, huh? We're doing some homework? Oh, of course. We always do our homework. Uh, with that homework. Yeah, who you doing? Your, who's your, who's your professor then, eh? And I start, like, uh, like cracking my uh wrists <laughs> it's like i got i got a proposition for you two one you can't refuse oh we shall see about that my friend we shall see about that oh i'm sure i'm sure we can come to an agreement here quite quite easily so what i'm uh what i'm gonna tell you is you know it's kind of dangerous hanging around with some people that you've been you've been hanging around with kind of don't like uh, uh things getting shaken up if you know what i mean are you scared of some ladies? Oh, no. Well, maybe you're scared of this one. I mean, I point over at, uh, at Clarence, and I was just like, pretty much the only <laughs> people we've seen all day is a couple girls and uh, this old guy. So, I mean, you're not in, not exactly inspiring me with your courageousness. Clarence is going to shove his shoulder and be like, super, super innocent, be like, Fanny's a scary lady? Come on. You guys look like you can handle yourselves. Well, we're not talking about them. We're talking about you guys, right? I think uh proposition here is, you know, just kind of go about your business. Just leave that whole area alone. Which area particular are you interested in? Is Fanny? Because uh, I'll tell you, we got almost nothing to do with that. That's just a social visit, if you will. I like to, you know, spend some time around interesting broads, you know? Yep, and he'll kind of roll his shoulders and, uh, yeah, 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 sure. Sure, house visit, whatever. I, I I'm I'm gonna tell you, Polly boy. You kinda you kinda known around here. You've been to a fight or two years. But I am. <laughs> gotta tell you though, outside the ring you gotta watch yourself. And I'm gonna tell you. We're gonna we're gonna ask you right now. You're gonna tell us, you're gonna stay out of stay out of that business area. Well, I'll tell you something real quick. No, we'll we're we'll coming to a negotiation here, right? We're we're just businessmen having a polite discussion. I think we'll all agree. Of course, of course. Uh, at this point, if you two want to roll a spot hidden, you may do so. I would love to roll a spot hidden. That sounds like it might save my life. <laughs> a success and Clarence is a extreme success with an iron. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That artistic eye for flaws. Yep. You notice uh, as you're having this conversation that the gentleman that's in front of you mostly has been kind of keeping his hands in his pocket, but they've kind of slipped out as he's been kind of gesticulating. You notice that his right hand has brass knuckles on it. And when you're looking around, kind of looking back at the guy, 
You notice that the pocket is kind of bulgy on the guy behind you. You're assuming that that's not, you know, just a sandwich or anything. The shape of it definitely looks like it might be mm-hmm. a pistol. Oh, boy. Great. Um. Okay, we both see that? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. With those successes? Okay. Absolutely. Okay. All right. They're not, they're not making it super unobvious. Right. But not, yeah. No, I hear you. Okay, so I'm I'm waiting to hear this negotiation. This uh, this come to an agreement here from from Polly. <laughs> uh, I want to clock that, um, and uh, I'd like to roll intimidate, uh, because I'm I've got a, a plan for this individual in front of me. All right, and with that, he gets to oppose that, doesn't he? Uh, I don't recall how that how that functions. All right, well, let's look that up then. I thought it was a opposed roll. <laughs> push the roll, push the roll. Always, always push the roll. I mean, we only <laughs> broke the crystal, so what could go wrong now? Shit. Absolutely nothing. Yeah. Let me get this open here. Apologize, it's going to take a second just to look it up. No worries at all. I'm trying to figure out how Clarence is going to going to react in this kind of situation. Yep. Failure pushing. I think Paul is going to be uh, uh, dismissive and disappointed no matter what happens. <laughs> Ah, here we go. Post skill rolls, player versus player. Um, both sides declare a mutually exclusive goal. One will win, the other will lose. Each side selects a skill or characteristic to use, not necessarily the same one, both of which must be approved by the keeper. Both sides roll dice to determine the level of success by comparing their rolls with the chosen skill or characteristic. Um... So when one side uses a characteristic, the other side should be given the choice of whether to use characteristic or a skill. So he's going to use a skill. So we'll just keep that simple. Let's see here. Comparing results. A critical success beats an extreme success. A extreme success beats a hard success. A hard success beats a regular. And a regular beats a failure or fumble. So yeah, he's And from to... Intimidate, it looks like it's opposed by Intimidate or Psychology. Yep. And he'll roll his Psychology. So we'll do just a D100 roll here on my side. And he got a four. Wow. So with that, yep, yep, that's that would be an extreme success on his side. Even if his skill is like 20 because it's one-fifth, and one-fifth is four, so he, he hit it. Yep, yep. He does not he doesn't take kindly to your intimidation. But what does that look like? What does that look like, Paul? How does it look like oh, I, trying I, to intimidate this guy and it Paul, doesn't work? Paul steps forward again um and is just sort of cocksure. Uh he's like I want you to uh only think about it. how fast do you think your friend back there is gonna be? Fast enough that uh he's gonna shoot both of us before I beat you into the fucking ground? He only needs to shoot one of us. Hey, I wasn't <laughs> worrying about you. You can take care of yourself. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, maybe. Why'd you have to step into this? This isn't... Ah. <laughs> so the gentleman kind of, you know, uses his left hand, leaves his right hand kind of in his pocket a little bit, kind of pulling it out a little bit, and kind of flicks his hat with his thumb to get it to to rise up a little bit. Lowers his head a little bit. I, I don't think you uh, quite get the the situation here. I think oh, uh, we're making me. you a deal you can't refuse, and you're trying to refuse. I don't believe we're refusing so much as coming to see new terms, perhaps. Oh, and what terms do you think you got? I think what we got is uh, a situation where 
you are not being uh, particularly clear in the issues that uh, you just stay away. Stay away from what? We've been doing this. I don't know what you know. I don't know who you work for. I don't know what the fuck your deal is. You tell me what I'm not supposed to do, and I can tell you whether or not that's agreeable. Uh, you just stay away from the women's movement. We got uh, we got things going on that uh, we don't want you sticking your nose in. The women's movement? Uh, I think with that, uh, can I try to get like a, a bead specifically on this guy? Like, does it seem like that's his actual issue? Like, that they are anti-suffragettes? If you, with your previous role, uh, that's, you're taking them at face value at this point in time. You're pretty okay, sure that's, well, that's exactly good. what he's talking about. All right. I, maybe you don't keep up with the times, brother, but, uh, you know, that's already going through the Senate. You know, it's, it's passed. It's just waiting for ratification. There's absolutely no point whatsoever now in being opposed to the women's movement. Look, I don't think anything of it, but it's a done deal. It's, be, it's out of my hands, and it's sure as hell out of Jamuk like you's hands. But if you want me to not hang out with the suffragettes, all right, whatever. They won't be suffragettes for much longer, I'll tell you that. We got an agreement here, I'll tell you that. How about, how about this? Yep, right. yep. No problem here. Hate women in pants. <laughs> hey, 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 that's just rude, brother. It keeps me alive. <laughs> but, all right, you know, so we got All right, you. we're done with Fanny. We're done with Fanny. That's fine, you know? If you're not interested in the, the women's movement, the match of progress is something that frightens you, then, uh, you know, you might want to think about yourself and your place in society. Clarence is going to, like, immediately turn to go. Oh, yeah. Um, I, Paul is, like, turned on a heel at that point and is going to, like, he intends to totally just brush past the other guy with the gun. All right. Well, thank you very much, gentlemen. We'll be, uh, we'll make sure you keep your promise there. And you have a good day. That was I just weird. flip him off as we leave the alleyway. <laughs> that was so weird. Yep, and they're not going to chase you or do anything about that. About the time you get back to the trolley station, the trolley is pulling up and loading on to go downtown. I think we get on. Yeah, um, Clarence definitely tries to get on, and it just he's just kind of blinking and you know glancing over his shoulder, like what what was that? Really not sure. Oh, so, I Paul, you you run into guys like that often? Eh. Sometimes they're trying to sell something stolen. Sometimes they're trying to make uh, bets on a fight. Sometimes, you know, it, you know, a lot of legitimate business gets done in alleyways. That's all I'm saying. Mm. Mm. A lot of your legitimate business gets done in alleyways. What? You know, the so definition you... of legitimate is up to the uh, particular arena that you happen to find yourself in. Yeah, the eye of the boulder, as it were. You've been following this uh, this movement pretty closely, huh? How'd you know it was going through Senate? It's in all the fucking papers. You don't read? Oh, I forgot. You only make art. What? Well, I... oh. this, is the, this is the battle of a time. This is like, this is a huge news. It's, you know, New York has been working on this for a while. I suppose maybe out here in Detroit, you guys don't understand the ramifications quite as much, or maybe you've been trying to push it down. But this movement's been going on since the late 1800s, buddy. Where you been? Me? I've been puzzling over you using a word as long as ramifications. Hey, How long is it gonna I'm not educated. It doesn't mean I'm not intelligent. Oh, God. That's a difference. Semantics. Semantics with a fucking boxer. My day is going to be so long. You damn straight. Now, no, I don't understand what their beef is. If they're, they're frankly, if that's what this is really about, if there's nothing underneath that, they're fucking idiots. That's all I gotta say. Like, there's no point. This, we're done. You know, uh, I would still be worried. It might pass that along to Fanny that people, you know, give a crap. But that this whole thing is gonna be done. This, uh, yeah, yeah, it's in the papers. So I suppose it's in the papers. You heard it here first, folks. It's done because it's in the papers. <laughs> no, no, no. It's not done. It's in the papers that it's going to be done. <laughs> I think at that point, Clarence gives up 
and slumps back against the wall and stares out the window. Yeah, I think uh, if we're on the trolley, I like look to see if anyone's got like uh, is reading the newspaper and I'll like, uh, is there anybody that has like a a paper on the the trolley? Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Oh, I just totally like yank it out of the hands and like grab it and start flipping through. It's like, if you pardon me for a second, so I don't mean to interrupt. You You just hold on a second there. You just sit tight. It's just I'm making a point for my friend here. Is there anything in the papers about the ratification of the 19th Amendment? Oh, please say there isn't. It'd be so perfect. <laughs> I'm going to be happy either way as a player. Why don't you give me why don't you give me a roll? Give me a D100. If it's if it's over 50, it's in there. If it's below 50, there's nothing in there. All right, we'll give it a shot. I do apologize for him, sir. He uses the term friend loosely. So there, with that role, there definitely is something in there about it. Yeah, like look, I, like I'm just like like thrust it in his face, even if it's like not front page, like I'd find wherever it is and just push his nose in it. A classified ad about the next march, just super small. No, no, above it. No, look over <laughs> on the other side. No, stop it. You, you're being purposely obtuse, and I don't appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, okay, I got it, I got it. You know, one hand pushing the paper aside. It's in the papers that it's going down. I see it, okay. I will I will try to stay up on the news more. I don't have the time. Have you seen the textbooks? Have you seen the artwork? Rock doesn't pay my bills. Shaping the rock pays my bills. I've never seen you with any rock. I'm not quite sure what we're talking about anymore. Uh, and oh Paul, like, hands the paper back to the, the guy. Uh... And probably like, I don't know, like flex a quarter at him or something. For your trouble. I do, I do, uh, thank, thank, uh, and he just, <laughs> poof, you know, kind of grabs both sides of the paper and, you know, flicks the paper to get it to straighten out and just buries his face if, back into it. And if there were any like women also on the trolley, I think he would be like, I think he would talk about it extra loud, almost like, <laughs> like demonstrably, <laughs> like just playing it up slightly. Yep, yep. Perfect. The ratification of the 19th Amendment to the Constitution, which is going to be for an equal suffrage, like equal rights of voting, access for women who have the God given right, as we determine, uh, which I guess doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. But anyway, you know, for voting, you know, because everybody's equal. He starts like, like, uh, gesturing across the car of like, uh, that's sort of like, Almost like to to raise them up, like you know, hey, somebody here agree with me. Clarence uh, feels like he might be like trying to start a fight, so he's gonna scoot a couple arms lengths back. <laughs> yeah, and if nobody says anything, he just like waves his hand at all of them. He's like, guy in New York, I could have started a fucking riot by doing that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yep, and it's a, it's you know, it's a conversation about it being ratified uh, potentially later, you know, mid year. It's not it's not ratified. It's been passed by Congress at this point in time, but has not been ratified yet. So that's what a lot of the, the conversation is about in there. So nice, nice. Yeah, yeah so we so we get moving on our, our train trip. Uh history yeah. lessons over. <laughs> Solid historical accuracy here, guys. Point for immersion. Points for Oh, immersion. I did my homework. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting that. I love it. I love it. So you guys, <laughs> nature. <laughs> oh boy, I'm in trouble because I am. I am definitely not. Uh, I, I had to do some work on this. It was great. Yep. No, that's perfect. That's perfect. I'd rather have. I'd rather have some historically accurate stuff than anything. Anything else. So, uh, well, I mean, you know, Cthulhu happened back then too. So, you know, yeah, exactly. taking that into account. It's one of those weird things where it's like this isn't my like. This isn't my era. I'm not really uh, an American history buff. Uh, so in like character creation, it's it's that was when like some of this homework all came in, and I was like, oh okay, get build myself a better a better picture of the time. But that's mm-hmm. all on the side. We should we should get down to this uh, bookstore. Yep. Uh, the trolley rest of the trip is uneventful. It doesn't go exactly where the flower shop area is, so it takes a little bit to get there. You're probably looking at. You know, by the time you get down to the area, it would be about when things would start start closing up, right? It's getting on kind of dinner time. You definitely have 
like that. Getting to the bookstore should still be open. I'm going to share a map with everyone. Uh, share record. And, you know, based on that, um, and just to speed things along a little bit, you take some time and kind of ask around where a bookstore is, and you end up finding it. Let's see if I do this right. Oh my god, that is a tiny freaking arrow. Or this map is just really big. I don't know what I did here, but... Um, I mean, I see your arrow, and I see the map. Yep, so you see the arrow pointing, and it's got a little rosy cross books there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so, is this the first time that we've been made aware of the uh, name of the bookstore? Uh, yes, the 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 it's a newer bookstore uh, from what was in the journal with Poppy, and she didn't mention the specific bookshop name. She just said uh, introduced her to a new library and bookshop near the flower shop, and she called it Our Little Research Laboratory, but she never stated exactly what it was. It just said it was nearby. Right. And this is the spot I'm that everybody down. everybody points you to. Gotcha. I think, uh, so we get off the, um, the trolley and just sort of like hoof it the rest of the way. Mm -hmm. um, by the way that we come in, do we like pass by the flower shop too, or is that uh, like not going to be on our path in. So a lot of this is you're going to pass pretty close by. Um, you can see on Eldridge Street, kind of on the right side, second house or second building down from St. Maria Street. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's see if we can clear. All Severn the Floral and, and Unit B. Yep. Yep. Remove all my pointers. So we might so, yeah. see it as we pull in on the trolley on St. Maria. Yes. Yes. Uh, so you guys head down Rose Court, but you definitely see the flower shop. So it's kind of in this area uh, for sure. I think uh, we get like in front of the, the bookshop and I like, or Paul looks over at, uh, at Clarence and is like, you know, maybe, uh, maybe it's, a little on the nose here. I didn't realize that the I'm looking at this Rosicrucian manual and we got a rosy cross book. I'm not exactly a Latin scholar, but uh, I don't think you need to be to put that together. Clarence is going to scratch his head and uh, roll an intelligence to see if he puts it together. Oh, all right. It's a success. Damn. I wanted him to fill that one. But yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, Paul, I think you might be onto something there. Still not super clear on the whole Rosicrucian thing, but, you know, it's definitely creeping out a little bit. So let's roll in here and maybe not talk about Poppy. I don't know if this is the bookshop where they were doing all their research. Someone may know something, but may not want us to be looking for her. You know what I mean? I have no yeah. idea what you just said. And he walks in. So the um... bookstore stands at the end of the cul-de-sac marked by a wooden painted sign. Uh, during business hours, which it currently is, a uh, wood open plaque hangs below that sign. Uh, the newer houses around it resemble a miniature gingerbread village, uh, bedecked in intricate cut wood decor and dainty white picket fences and hedgerows. The shop itself shows no signs of neglect and resembles a converted cottage. The window boxes are overflowing with, and I'm going to butcher this, uh, peony, how do you say that word? That's an interesting peonies. I believe it's peonies. peonies. Is it peonies? Uh, with peonies, mm. and the walk is lined with pansies of different colors. The brown wood and plaster style of the walls look out of place and dated, though in decent repair. A handwritten sheet in the window declares the bookstore is open from 10 to 8, Monday to Friday, and by appointment. Hmm. That's creepy. By appointment? Mm-hmm. That's what it says. So you guys can just... Oop, go, ahead. go ahead. I was going to say, I think I'm just primed for everything to be creepy. The sun is shining and the sky's blue. Now that's creepy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so 10 to 8 and by appointment. Uh, I think Clarence is just ready to kind of push on in, right? I think Polly cruised in there. It was about to. Yep. So you guys oh, yeah, can... He walks in and is like, hey, it's Poppy here. Hey, hello. Can I get some assistance? Oh. <sighs> 
so you guys can can definitely go go inside um and it is uh let me see here let me see if i can do this really easily for you guys um so there it is do, 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 do. give me two seconds here to get this up and running but i want to mask it We can draw on the mask right. Real area. There we go. Okay, so now I should be able to share this out. So you enter kind of the the front area of the bookshop, and in fact. You know, you can see uh, if you guys are able to pull it up. Uh, yep, it came up for me. Okay. Yep. You can see that there's, you know, a window seat. There's some sitting areas. There are, and along all the walls are a bunch of books. Um, just everything you can, you can do. Uh, a, a lot of it is like Poppy and, and uh, Cedric would really be into for that. <laughs> so a little bit after you walk in and paul's like hey hey is poppy here someone help me uh, a gentleman comes out kind of a, a middle-aged gentleman glasses kind of the the librarian type of look that you would you would expect and comes out and uh yeah yes what what can i do for you hello my friend we've got a few questions uh, we've got uh, a few pieces that maybe you could help identify. You seem, you know, not, you seem like a bookish type. It's, uh, I mean, that is uh, not only the greatest for gods, uh, my associate here, uh, Clarence, uh, may have some, uh, we, we both may have some familiarity with uh, other patrons of yours, and uh, we, we got a couple questions. We're, we're looking to help somebody out today. Uh, well, you know, uh, that's... Maybe you could help us out to help somebody else out. You know what I'm saying? Well, I, I mean, I can, I can certainly help. I have, I have a lot of uh, books here that I can certainly help with. I, uh, as for, um, you know, other, other customers, uh, I'm not sure. And he's at this point, you know, he starts wringing his hands. Uh, he's, he's not making very good eye contact with you. Um, and I his. Your old... <laughs> Feel free. Filthy. No. Yep. Uh, so, Paul, you made you made your roll. Mm -hmm. uh, Clarence, you're not sure what's going on with this guy. But, Paul, mm -hmm. you're with a psychology roll. It's not you're getting the idea that he's not specifically hiding stuff from you. And the nervousness that he has is just more his personality that you're getting off of him. It's not you know really trying to hide stuff he's trying to be a good business you know uh shop owner and you're asking questions about other people that have come in here so he's a little a little shy about that uh i think yeah yeah paul paul picks up on that um and uh steps like a little further in and um pats is like briefcase or no he pats like Cl uh clarence i think on the side just as like have some interaction going on like something else for him to observe that's like not hostile or anything so just like pat clarence uh and go oh you know i don't mean to be you know this isn't this isn't anything bad you know we're not like with the police and nothing this is just uh we're friends looking for friends you know and um that that came out kind of weird. Um, we're trying to help a friend who may have been in here. That uh, sweet girl, uh, young thing, a uh, little poppy. Um, I think she likes your uh, what you have on offer here in the store, and um, 
you know, we just uh, we got word about it. Her mother's been worried about it. We're friends with the mother and friends with friends. It's one of those. Uh, this is a social, almost like a social call. It's just, um, you know, we're just trying to be. Uh, what's the word, Clarence? What am I looking for? I think to untangle what my friend here is saying is we're just trying to help out a widow who's missing her daughter. It's been over 24 hours now. She's deeply concerned, sir. We're just trying to peace. Concerned, that's it. Concerned citizens, that's what we are. (laughs) Um, Go ahead and give me a persuasion roll from both of you. (laughs) What do you mean? This isn't where Polly excels? Not in the slightest. (laughs) Oh, God, neither do I. (laughs) Man, so uh, a 28 would normally be a great roll, but... (laughs) I have no points invested. <laughs> he 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 kind of is still wringing his hands. He's like, "Well, um, I I I appreciate that." And he'll start moving back behind the, you know, kind of in the bottom right of the picture. There, there it looks like there's a, you know, that's the front desk of the the bookshop. So he kind of gets behind there, um, and kind of sits down there and starts chatting with you. Uh, you both notice at that point in time that the the case uh, that is the desk, it kind of has a display case on the front, which has, you know, a few books in it that are priced pretty high versus other books. Like a lot of the other books, you know, you can see on that desk too, right there, there's uh, copies of the history of St. Maria of the Rose for 50 cents. Uh, the books that are in the display case, you know, are way more than that. Way, way more than that. One of them has pretty interesting writing on it, too. It's not not written in English. He's like, so, so you, you're, you were kind of saying someone's, someone's missing? Uh, if that's the case, have you, have you called the police, of course? I want you to assume that we've done our due diligence. Okay, and spoken to relevant authorities. But as I suggested, this is somebody in distress, and we have a personal concern for their well being. So we have uh, taken our own steps, if you will. You know, um, I believe I mentioned the name. Maybe you're familiar with, um, with, with Poppy Carmine? Uh, Poppy. Poppy Carmine. Poppy. Uh, Poppy. I. It looks like the flower shop at the other place. I I I I remember Cedric works at the the uh the shop over there for sure. Oh, okay. So you you at least know the flower shop and and you never noticed if he's got a a, a girl hanging out with him. Um well, sir, I I you know, if anybody was customers, you know, if I had I had people coming in to ask questions about you i i wouldn't be you know going off and telling everybody that that you've been here and that type of idea i i i think it's a little well, unreasonable i would hope to... not on the most circumstances but in the circumstances of a missing young woman in detroit i would think that maybe you could be a little bit more forthcoming well like i said you know the police do the investigation i i I honestly don't know who you are or why why you're looking for them. Uh, who speaking of that, who who are you? Uh I'll be like my my name is Paul Wallace. Uh and then I'll take a quick beat and I'll turn to Clarence and I'll be like Clarence I'm I'm not exactly the most, you know, charming or persuasive of individuals. So there's like two ways that we can do this typically in my they're, realm they're... and it's a green way and a red way and I'll let you figure <laughs> out what those colors stand for. He's uh Clarence holds up a hand holding the cigarette and holding his his a lighter in the other hand and says, I think I know exactly what you're saying there, Polly. Uh yeah, sir, look, we this has been reported to the authorities. The young lady's been missing, and as as my friend here has mentioned, we have a specific personal interest. Uh just like people or merchants have specific personal interests in the quality of their goods and in the longevity of their goods and their ability to sell them. And he's just casually like speaking, waving the lighter around in one hand and the cigarette in the other. 
<laughs> standing in a bookshop. Uh, go ahead and roll an intimidation because it definitely sounds like you're, to him at least at this point in time, it sounds like you're threatening to burn down his bookshop. Well, not not threatening, but um, merely <laughs> drawing, connecting the dots for him on how we mm -hmm. feel about this character. And I think Clarence hopes that Paul is like on the beat since Paul just said red way, green way. You know, um, let me let me go ahead and roll these <laughs> dice here and see if we can beat our our bottomed out <laughs> bottomed out uh, stats persuade. <laughs> uh what happens if i push the roll do i accidentally drop the lit lighter <laughs> you can you can push it uh i like to i was know. gonna say if you're gonna go this route i would probably just go straight for the intimidation if you're already like basically leaning that way mm -hmm. i mean that's that's kind of where i'm heading with this and so like i said you know clarence is kind of like looking pointedly at polly as he's waving the lighter around like, you know, we're choosing the red way here, but not in so many words. <laughs> Keeper, yep. do you mind if I uh, try to apply my intimidation on this? Well, at this point in time, you know, with that, I'd say that roll still goes for the intimidation. Uh, either way, because it was the roll. I would have said it would have been an intimidation, too. So oh, I meant work for me, though. That's Clarence doing whatever he was mm -hmm. supposed to do. Yep. So... Certainly. So you're just going to lean right into the intimidation. What is that? What do you do to do that before you roll it? How are you intimidating him? I, I was imagining that like Clarence is trying to do whatever this shtick is with his cigarette and lighter in the bookstore and like this vague threat of arson and just like show off a little bit like, you know, again, like kind of go flex the arms and the fingers and be like, my friend here is uh, not versed in this kind of, uh, level of discussion he's trying to intimidate in the way that uh, or intimate to you that uh, if you're not cooperative with us some very bad things could happen he's going for a weird angle here like he's going to burn down your store i'm not really up for that but i'm going to tell you that we're going to look around your shop and we'd like you to be cooperative and give us answers otherwise you know you could end up with some broken bones by the end of the day. I'm going to look around here one way or another, and it's going to be a while, even if you try to summon the cops. It's going to be a minute before they arrive. Okay, go ahead and give me a roll. Oh, we will <laughs> definitely spend luck on that, being that close. Or we'll push. I'm so... I love pushing rolls. Uh, but it's so close, um, I will happily spend luck to get that to be a success. Okay, you may do so. Uh, he kind of... <laughs> these fixers getting things done <laughs> trying still working out how to change the luck over here don't worry about it yep yep he like scooches the chair back uh and stops wringing his you know hands uh and like puts them in his pockets uh, yeah, well, you, you don't have to go that far like i don't want to go that far well, well don't then but but don't okay make okay me. Okay, 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 okay. Jeez, who you, are you guys from the mob? I'm, I'll tell you, but who who, you, who are you guys? Like, what what do you got a connection to to Poppy for? I I'll tell you, I'll tell you. I just want to know before I tell you. We've been trying to tell you, Clarence. And we were trying to tell him. We've been trying to tell him that we're friends of the family. Yeah, friends. And that may sound more intimidating than I mean, because friends of the family can sometimes mean that we're in the mafia. Look, I don't need you to draw conclusions. We're friends of the communes. We have a, a social connections with them. We're just trying to be good citizens. And I, you know, am willing to not be a good citizen on occasion if that's what it takes to get the job done. Oh, 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 okay. Uh, um, well, uh, so... Yeah, yeah, Cedric. Cedric is a regular regular customer. Um, and uh, um, I remember Cedric uh, introducing me to to a young lady. Uh, I I believe her name was Poppy, uh, as far as I remember. Do you do you have a picture or anything like that? Um, that could. Let me ask you something, Mister Bookseller, Mister Ah for details. Does Cedric come in here with anyone else? Yeah, yeah, I, I just told you he did. I was just, that way I could actually tell you 100% that it's the person you're looking for. 
Well, now I'm less interested in that. I want to know who else he comes in here with. A, a young lady. Need, I, no, you're not listening to me. I want to know if he comes in with anyone other than the young lady. You need to keep up, sir. Well, I, I've got someone threatening to break my arms. I'm a little bit uh, 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 jumpy right now. So, jeez. I swear he only mentioned bruises, not arms. You're fine. Focus. Oh, no, I specifically mentioned that he could break a bone or two. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, no one, no one else that he comes in with. Uh, the only other person he has come in with is has been has been this young lady, which I think is Poppy. I, I but I, but like that, if you if you have a picture or anything, I could I could tell you for sure. Uh, but um, you know they they've come in and and gotten some books. Uh, you know they, um, you know I think I think it was like a, a book on charcoal sketching. They there was the the rosicrucian book uh that they had um and uh a hey, hieroglyphic Rosa, Rosa rosicrucian thing is that your whole deal here you got the rosicrucian book you're some sort of rosy cross thing is that uh, your shtick well if you look at the book right here you could you could buy one uh it's the history of uh, uh saint maria of the rose so Sir, I, I want you I, to think about what you've just suggested to the man that has just threatened your life and well-being you suggesting <laughs> that he buy the book you're going to give me the information is what you're going to do. Well, you're, that's stealing. You can't steal the books. You can't steal knowledge, can you? You tell me what sort of thing is all about, and then I don't got to buy a book. But, what? For the love of God, and he, like, pulls out his wallet and, like, throws, like, <laughs> like a $10 bill down on the counter. And is just like, we'll do it. this is a hybrid way now, Clarence. We're in new territory. I've never done red and green. <laughs> We learn something new every day. And <laughs> he he goes, well, uh, you know, uh, uh, so well, you, here it just he'll he'll take the take the ten dollars and he'll pop open the cash register and give you change for it. And like and while he's fluttering, I just yeah. shake my head at him. Is like you really don't understand how this works, fucking uh, Clarence. Look, <laughs> what's your name, sir? Uh, Mr. Matthews. Mr. Matthews. Mr. Matthews. It's a pleasure. I'm Paul Wallace. This is my associate. Um, I'm going to go ahead and close the door, and we're going to flip that sign to close, and we're just going to have a chat for a minute, okay? And, Ooh. you know, I say that in a pleasant, you know, convivial manner, but what I mean to say is you do not have a choice in this matter. We're going to close this door real quick, and we're going to have a chat, okay? So why don't we make this as comfortable as possible for everyone involved? We'll go get a cup of tea, set it out, you know, we'll have a quick chat. Don't mind it. That that is a little bit for your time, if you understand. You you have this is going to be the most pleasant threat to your life that you've ever experienced. <laughs> I've never actually experienced one, so it's both the well, worst. Con congratulations! It's your lucky day. <laughs> Clarence well, moves to close the door and flip the sign. Well, well, Paul continues laying it out for him. Okay, and he while while the door is closing, he finishes counting out your your change. Uh, and slides it across the table to you, and then grabs one of the books and shakily, you know, sets it by the money. W okay, so this is supposed to keep the whole bill. I am being nice to you. Well, you bought a book. That's nice. Like the bu the books are the important part. Not from my perspective, Mister Matthews. You need to understand that I am not here for the books. I am here for information. You have information. You may store it in books, but you also have yourself and your information. This is a, normally I would have beat a man for this already. Clarence, I need you to take over. I need you to step in. I need you to. You, you got to handle this. I'm, I'll be right back, Mister Matt. And he like walks over to like the the window seat as like position there and just like looks out and like grabs a book and like pretends to read it for a second. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Mr. Matthews, uh, I think I think maybe we got off on the wrong foot here. Um, let's let's start fresh. Is this is this a good am, cop, bad cop type of thing? I am Clarence. I told you we're not cops. I am Clarence. Shut up. <laughs> I am Clarence Williamson. Uh, my associate here is Paul Wallace. We are friends of Mrs. Carmine, who is the mother, the widowed, poor ailing mother of the young girl who comes in with Cedric. I know you know Cedric. Have some mercy. Cedric, shut up. 
<laughs> Cedric is a sweet boy. I know that you know Cedric very well, and he's worked at the flower shop for a long time, as it's his family that owns it. Poppy is the young girl who has been coming in with Cedric uh, recently, and she only started at the shop a few short months ago after her father passed away across town. Just giving yeah. you the whole frame. Bear with okay. me here. Okay. And yeah, yeah. You you think you think you're picking up? You, you're picking picking up what I'm putting down. Are we feeling a little more comfortable about this whole thing? Well, I, I really I... want to know. Who else has been coming in with Cedric? If you happen to know their name or happen to know what they were looking for, we're trying to put together pieces of a puzzle. You're not a doctor. There's no patient confidentiality here. I think that we just want a few pieces about who may have happened into this store with someone that we happen to know. A friend of a friend is asking about a friend. You know, nothing, nothing real sinister. And he'll pause and take a long drag on a cigarette. Uh, he he's like, well, I I was trying to d trying to tell you what I knew before before the guy started threatening my arm again. So 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 we and he's like he's so flustered right now. He's got his hands up. He's like, well, before before he comes back. <laughs> oh yeah, There's definitely like a huff from Paul in the corner when he hears like that. And there's like. He's so just so, mumbles, like lowers the volume. Is like, I'm not just your fucking arms you're worried about. <laughs> Cedric has, C Cedric hasn't, Cedric hasn't come into, to, with anybody else other than than a young lady. Like I said, I, I I'm gonna assume it's Poppy. I think that's what he said her name was. But again, I'm just trying to collaborate with it. Uh, so so, just the young lady. So if you want to assume that that's Poppy, if you had a picture, I could I could absolutely tell you who it is. She's she's come in. She's gotten some books on charcoal sketching. She she took a book on the Rosicrucian and and a hieroglyphic translation text that that she also borrowed. Oh, as soon as he says that, like Paul starts like snapping and like pointing that 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 the uh, fucking I want one of those. Give me one of those right now. I he uh, left like the all that change on the counter. Like he didn't take any of the change you gave him for the book. He's just like take it out of whatever's left over there. Give me one of those. Okay, well, uh, he'll. Okay, uh, I, oh, oh. The other thing that I always I thought was interesting too is she's she was always wearing pants and she always had her carpet bag with her. Uh, and as he's you know kind of he's saying that as he's getting up to go grab a book, uh, and pulls one off of there. Uh, this isn't this isn't exactly the one that she had. Uh, she she's she borrowed that one. Uh, so I'm guessing, well, if you find her, I'm guessing she'll bring it back. Oh, I might I'm have to sure she'll, book. I'm sure she'll bring it back, Mr. Matthews, not to worry. But that, that young lady is definitely the poppy of which we speak. Okay. Okay. Uh, and he'll, <laughs> you see him complete, like he, he started looking for that book and he pulls the book out and he's kind of looking at it like, well, this isn't exactly the right one. And it seems like, you know, for that brief second, he's like, Oh, I'm back in my books. He turns around and you know, he's looking down at the book oh, and he Paul's looks up mean at, mugging him the entire time. Yeah. He looks up at you, Paul. And he's like, ah! yeah, no, like, so early, like Paul was like at the window seat, looking out the window, pretending to sort of peruse through books, like trying to both cool down and seem to anyone passing by, like things are normal. Um, but he has since like foregone that pretext, put the book on the back of the shelf. He's just watching, just sullen. <laughs> yep. Yep. And uh he'll come over and like very cautiously, like haltingly hand the book to you. I think because uh, Paul is a little riled, he'll like he'll do a He'll be a jerk about it, I think, almost, and, like, raise his fist up for a moment. But then, like, before anybody could really process the, if he was going to hit this guy, like, it turns into, like, a, a you know, he the his hand unclenches and he just, like, grabs at the book and, like, receives it. He just wants to make him flinch, basically. <laughs> he hasn't stopped flinching except for the second he was looking at the book. Um, <laughs> so... So, so not not hard to accomplish, no. or rather hard hard to not accomplish, basically. 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Okay, yeah, I, I snatched that from him, and I'm like, that's very helpful, thank you so much. You're, you're welcome. And, uh, goes back, goes back behind the desk. Uh, but, um, I, I don't have, um, a whole lot else for you I, um like that it's uh been a, been like a few days since they've been in um like maybe almost you a week to overhear them talking about anything as they uh studied these books or came in happily discussing which books to borrow was there anything that maybe stood out in your mind uh, or maybe that you dismissed as uh kids talking about maybe making things up well um not not specifically i i mean they they had mentioned uh you know uh, especially with the the hieroglyphic book that they kind of wanted to to look something up in there uh to see if they could you know uh uh read something they they they've talked about kind of fantastical stuff you know as you can see i kind of have some some fairly odd books here so it's been you know from what i've heard it's just looking in the books kind of looking at stuff you know uh doing doing that um you know she bought a you know book on charcoal sketching uh so i think uh, paul's got a, like a little bit of a question mm -hmm. um i think it's it's it might go back to to Matthews and like be a, a asked uh, a question between them, but you had mentioned the the like the sort of Rosicrucian primer uh, for fifty cents, and it's like right there available to counter. Is it like clearly like one of the cheapest things and most prominent things in the store? Like, do you have to do you have to try to miss it? Uh, it is definitely on the desk right at the entrance. Uh, there's you know four or five books uh copies of it there for sure and, and it's sort of like just pricing things out does it seem like one of the most easy to obtain things it is it is it's one of the cheaper things for sure like you can you know a quick look around at at some prices and stuff like that you can see there's probably some for like 25 cents um but you know 25 cents is kind of the lower end and kind of goes up from there there's definitely some from dollar to a little bit more than that that you could buy as well. Um, other yeah, than the that... ones in the case, which are very expensive. Right. Right. I, I think that's sort of like Paul's angle now. Cause he's, he's hearing some of the same stuff on repeat now. Uh, and he's like, I need a little bit more Mr. Matthews. It is Mr. Matthews, right? I haven't forgotten that in my rage. Uh, no. Yes. Yes. That's my name. Excellent. Thank you so much, Mr. Matthews. So you have a bookstore here called uh -huh. the rosy cross and some kids of uh, a younger age came in and you have helped them select a number of books including books on this what was that the, what's the full title of that book it's the rosicrucian manual or some shit uh, clarence Either way, you you gave them this sort of book this rosicrucian your rosy cross you want me to sort of you tell me that you haven't spoken with these guys maybe at more length. Right, did you give this idea of this esoteric order to to Cedric? You know, I feel like you might know these people a little bit more well than just recommending a book to them here or not. You've never had discussions with them? Well, well I've certainly, you know, they've asked kind of the books they wanted. And I, I mentioned the, the you know, the, the history of St. Maria of the Rose, and, and they asked if there was anything else, and I, I pointed them to the Rosicrucian, so... Can I but, assume that you are familiar with the knowledge inside that book? Well, I've read a lot of books, yes. Yes, that is part of what I'm looking for. You seem to know things and be in the know about a number of subjects. You know, I was thinking maybe we'd go ask some sort of uh, professor or somebody with the you know, maybe tenure at some sort of university, but we're here at the bookstore, okay? So, Mr. Matthews, you're now my source of information. You're going to be cooperating in this end. Do you, do you kind of understand what I'm driving at here? Well, I, I, I'm, I, sir, I'm not, I'm not attempting to, to, to tell any lies to you. I, I 
I have a lot of books in here. That doesn't mean I prescribe to everything that's in here. All right, maybe I'm barking up the wrong tree then. But Mr. Matthews, do you own this bookstore or do you simply work here? I it's it's my shop, yes. Oh, thank God. If you had gotten the other answer on that, then I would look a right fool. <laughs> yeah, that's, but, that's uh, speaking you know, of I, wrong I, I had maybe stopped to consider that angle, but uh, you know, you make an assumption when you got a bookstore like this, I'm just saying. Uh but uh yeah, Mr. Matthews if you could maybe give us a primer yourself, like, is there some connection here that could uh, tie together uh, this Rosicrucian manual or the life of St. Maria with uh, the hieroglyphs that your wayward uh, patrons were also pursuing? Is there, is there connections in this, uh, this realm of thought? Well, so, I, let me, so, the, with the hieroglyphs, no, I, if you look around, a, a lot of the books I have are, you know. No, I, I didn't think it was a difficult convers- a difficult question, you know, if there's not a connection between the life of St. Maria and the hieroglyphs, that's a no. Easy peasy. If there is, that's a yes, and then there's maybe more questions after that. Thank you for answering that question. I now know that there's not a connection between those two things. There seems to be very much a connection between the books that this person was checking out and the things they were getting into. And I don't expect you to know everything about everything, but maybe a little bit more timely answer would be appreciated. Oh, I'm trying. Okay, maybe. Maybe. Clarence, Clarence, get over here. I haven't gone anywhere. I mean, get back into it. I don't, I just can't, you got to work with me. Mr. Matthews, um, are you aware of anything untoward that young adults should not be reading in these manuals? Things of occult nature that really are left for wiser, more educated heads to consume uh, rationally? And is there any way that you could reference a couple of things for us and maybe tell us what connection they might have to your shop? So, I, like I said, what I can tell you is what I remember them having checked out. You know, we did talk about the history of St. Maria of the Rose. I talked to them for a little bit. They ended up borrowing the Rosicrucian book. She bought the charcoal sketching book and they checked out the hieroglyph translation book because it sounded like they had something they wanted to read. Now, I don't know what they were, but, you know, other than that, I'm, I'm following you, Mr. Matthews. I am following you. Uh, you know, if uh, if we've both been going in circles, I apologize, but I think we've both been coming to our own conclusions in our own time. So I've got a new line of questioning for you. Let's leave some of that behind a little bit. So you've given them these books. You've We've made it very clear the kinds of books that you have associated with them and that you've given them a little bit of information on a personal level. Now, I've come to uh, – it's my understanding that they may have spent some time in your store – reading these uh these books or otherwise you know uh referencing things is that true uh yes okay where might they have done that he'll look around this is this is the the main part here i i you don't got like any side reading rooms or nothing like that that's what sort of what i'm asking you don't have any you know uh nooks or like you know reading areas or other parts of the shop that i'm not seeing here am i uh no nope this is this is the part of the shop that people would would use that's why i have chairs and and like that the window seat i'm just looking down there you got like a hallway you definitely got some doors that go to other places i don't know if you've got like a side reading room i've never been in a bookstore mr matthews is that hard to believe i should think not Clarence well, is going to just sort of start walking down the hallway and be like, yeah, like, what's behind this door? Well, and uh, push this open is that my... first door on the right there. This is also my house. You guys can't run around in my house. That, Mr. It's... Matthews, I think you will find that we can, and we will if we choose to. But again, that's not exactly what I'm looking for. Uh, I, Like I said, I was under the impression that they have been uh, reading 
and otherwise researching in your store. And the, Ms. Poppy has referred to it as their little lab. And that implies to me that they've spent some time here. I was just wondering if there's any part of the store or the building that they could have spent time in other than this selling room, you know, this main room. And I just told you no. And this point, he's he's getting in a huff as you walk, started walk down that hall. And he'll he'll grab his phone on the desk. Uh, I think it's time for you gentlemen to leave. You know, it might be. And uh, that's fine. I think maybe we could maybe understand that. Um, Clance, what are you are you, are you thinking? You got a, some sort of a intuition that you're following? Does uh does Clarence get a peek? Like one, is that door unlocked? Does it swing open? Does he get a peek inside? I don't think he'll actually go in. It's just like he started walking down the hall. That door's right there, so it's kind of like yeah, like what's over here? Just click the handle, pop the door open, and then close it and come back out, kind of thing. Yep, you can certainly open that first door there, and it, it's a it's a bathroom. All right, that's that's allowed. So he'll come back <laughs> around the corner, and uh, as as Paul says, you know what? What's your line of thinking? Uh, Clarence will say, "Look, Mister Matthews, again, w- it may be time for us to go. That may be so. It's been a very long day for all parties concerned. But as we stated, we're very concerned friends of friends of a friend, and we have documentation that tells us." what Polly and Cedric were doing, where they were, and what they were doing there. We're just trying to do a little fact-finding before we go down the wrong path. So, if there's something... A woman's life is at stake here. Or a young man's. Or all of them. So, do you want the death of three children on your hands? He'll he'll pick up the phone. Uh, You guys have threatened me quite enough, thank you very much. Uh, and he'll start shockingly not a threat it's the three children who are under threat i'm just asking how your conscience feels about that there's no threat coming your way here you're just gonna have to sleep with that he has he has a very sour look to him as he starts oh, yeah. uh using the rotary phone um <laughs> i think uh paul's gonna like they move to leave and like go to the the front door um He's going to point out the rest of the change that's on the table. He's like, please consider that a token for your time. Um, and then he wants to grab the phone and smash it. <laughs> Jay Eggins also has a point in chat. It could take up to 20 minutes to get that call out on a rotary. <laughs> oh, yeah, how old it is. It's just sort of like a, that's just, I think, the punctuation mark that, that Paul's oh, looking yeah. for on the conversation. No, real solid. Real solid. Clarence will stub his cigarette out on the counter as he walks past on his way out the door. Okay, so you smash the phone and and walk out. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you wanted me to like do any rolls for that, I'd be happy to. But uh, that, that's definitely the move that Paul would do. Yeah, I don't. He's not. He's not going to specifically like you. Just grab it and smash it. That's nothing. That's outside of what you could potentially do. Um, I mean, it'd be funny phone. to say you missed it, but you know that's. It's a normal phone. You, it's pretty easy to smash for just about anybody. So, yeah, I think um, if if Paul knows that, uh, and I'm assuming he probably would, uh, like the cost that will be to him, he'd probably like leave another uh, another like couple bills on the table <laughs> right before he leaves. <laughs> like this is premeditated. Paul's like, I'm gonna destroy that phone, but you know, I'm also gonna pay for it. Okay. Okay. Yep. You can certainly leave, you know, a few bucks on the on the counter and to pay for the phone. And uh, you guys, he just stands there flabbergasted at it, and it like looks around like, what? I did tell you this would be the best experience of having a life threatened that you would probably ever have. I, you know, sincerely hope you don't have to deal with this again. But you live in Detroit, so you know you're gonna have to learn a little bit. So um, have a pleasant day. Uh, thank you so much for your time. You know, let's not think about trying to get anybody involved in this for your own good, for our own good. Um, I hope that doesn't <laughs> sound threatening because that part's not. But look, I understand what I look like. I understand what's going on here. Um, yeah, either way, let's uh, let's get out of here and hopefully you never see us again. Oh, okay. Oh, boy. Oh, what a day. Oh, and flip the sign to open as we walk out the door. <laughs> <laughs>
All right, so you guys exit out of the bookstore. You notice that... Immediately thrust the, uh, like, hieroglyphics manual to Clarence and be like, make yourself useful. (laughs) You do notice that as you're walking down, you know, the walkway and you end up in the street, he's flipped the sign back to closed at this point. Oh, absolutely. And you guys are on the street. It's, It's definitely, you know... Probably hitting on, you know, six, seven o'clock at night now. Most places are going to be, most places are going to be closing up. Uh, the sign in this one said until 8 p.m., but it looks like he's decided to close early today. I can't imagine why. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, boy. Well, I guess the next stop then, uh, maybe we check and see how long the, uh, how late the flower shop is open. Well, yeah, we can we can definitely that should be right around the corner. I, Since we're it here, could be closed by now already. Yeah, that's true. But it is on the at the other side of the street, so definitely like at least walk by. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and uh, <clears throat> I take the um, I take the primer that he had the uh, the life of Saint Marie, and I flip through that while we're walking. Okay. Just looking and making sure I've got it right here. I didn't think that we would end up being bad cop, also bad cop. (laughs) Clarence just got fed up a little bit. Yeah, no, I think yeah. uh, I think I think as they're walking, Paul has a little bit of a deeper appreciation for Clarence. <laughs> it's is that something you actually say to him? Like I didn't think we'd. Yeah, have yeah, I think uh, I think that when we walk, uh, uh, Paul's like, you know, uh, you know, I, I'm not. Uh, I don't know how to phrase this properly. I'm not unimpressed by your performance in that. Now I do think that your opening gambit with the uh, cigarette and the lighter was maybe a bit too bold, maybe not as direct as it could have been. And also, um, you know, that's uh, that's a little bit darker than I usually go for. Is he was just being so pedantic? It's, it wasn't really hard. Glad he I just owns a don't... bookstore called the rosy cross i think that we may have uh, uh expected a different type of individual to be there I, I i've learned some lessons perhaps and maybe together we'll come out of this uh you know with a more complete picture out of uh navigating the future Possibly. also i gotta admit though that i was just a little, a little bit on edge from our last encounter i don't particularly like situations like that you know like i said i've done a lot of deals in alleyways but um you know it, it's the idiots but even an idiot could be dangerous with a gun yeah, yeah, can't they just? It's um, yeah. I think that's why I prefer to work in stone and shape marble. It's um, much oh, more shit, direct and to the you point. Do sculptures? Oh, for the hundredth time. Oh man, I'm sorry. I, I you know sometimes you get start talking about your work and I just sort of zone out. You know, I just go somewhere <laughs> else. That's yeah, really impressive, don't. though. That's really cool. I got to tell you, that's something. I thought you did like paintings and stuff, and that's kind of the reason why I kind of blew you off because I was like, "All right, so you got some goop that you put on a piece of canvas." All right, all right. Oh, painting is for nerds, right? That's what I've been fucking saying. <laughs> no, that's cool, brother. <laughs> and here, guys... three years after knowing each other peripherally, Paul oh, finally yeah. acknowledges <laughs> what Clarence does for a living. <laughs> this is so frustrating. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't. Uh, I didn't mean to see that, but it just seemed too good. I had to lean into it after the first time. Yep. Yep. So you guys wander around, you know, down Rose Court through Saint Maria's Street, and end up on Eldridge Street. Uh, looking at the flower shop, it is in fact closed. Uh, but what you do notice is that in the unit above the flower shop, the a faint light shines through the drawn curtains of the, what you're guessing is the unit above there. Uh, the shop lights are off and the door sign indicates that it is in fact closed. 
Uh, as oh, you were walking it, past yeah. St. Maria Street, you also noticed there was an alley that went down behind a lot of the buildings that are facing uh, Eldritch Street as well. Right. Yeah, there's a there's a back alley that connects the two, basically, or like splits the two. Yep. Yep. Um, yeah, I um, <laughs> I uh, Paul's a creature of alleys, so you'll definitely take a, a loop around like this mental process is just like, all right, they're closed. I want to scope this whole building um, and take a look around. So he will like, as soon as they see that the store front is closed, he'll be like, all right, there's an opportunity. Let me get a look at this whole spot in case I need to come back. Like Paul isn't necessarily a thug or isn't always a thug, but he thinks like one. <laughs> so uh, yep. he's immediately starts casing the joint. Yep, yep. Uh, so going through the back alleys, there are some barn doors that are on the back of the flower shop. And it looks like, you know, without too many issues, if you had wanted to get into the place, this wouldn't be horribly difficult. Uh, quietly, perfectly quietly, it'll be a little difficult. But, you know, if you wanted to get into this place, you could easily get in. Oh, if we wanted to get in here, we could totally get in, Clarence. Uh, do we want to get in? I feel like maybe we started off on the wrong foot with the bookkeep, and maybe we don't want to start off on the wrong foot with... Look, all I know is, let's, let's go back over some of the stuff that we've got in there, because it doesn't seem like there's going to be a right foot if we have a personal conversation with those who run this flower shop, because if if Poppy's missing, if Cedric's missing then there's nobody who's really nice inside that store because when we know about the parents there is they're trying to push Poppy onto the shithead brother and so Harold or whatever. So I don't think that we're going to have any allies in that couple, if you understand what I'm saying. If Harold's there, he's certainly not going to help us find Poppy if he's the kind of character that Fanny thinks he is. And if Cedric's there and he doesn't know what Poppy is, then he's still probably not going to be an ally because he's going to be bullied by his family, his brother, and he's going to be overcome with guilt because, you know, that's the kind of thing that happens to a man when they watch someone they care about die. That's a, an impressively deep dive coming from you. I I didn't know you had that in you. Um, Look, do we just want to surprises. pop up? Yeah, do we just want to pop up at the dining table, though, or should we, like, you know, knock on the door? Oh, uh... No, I wanted to go over a couple more things here real quick. Uh, we know that they got these books and stuff from the bookstore. Uh, mm -hmm. And that was their research space or whatever. It was a safe spot. But I need you to go back in those books and tell me, like, they got this door that they've been looking at. Is that door in the bookstore or is it in the flower store? I think it's the flower store. And I'm just thinking we go take a look. Speaking of which, I want to cross-reference those symbols with that book so we know what the door says. Cause it sounds like they were gearing up for this door thing. They did the door thing, and something happened after that. So that's probably the one place that we can find clues to what happened next. I don't know if that's something I can just do on the fly here, Polly. Like, that's kind of a tall ask. And, um, you know, Clarence is going to pull out the book and start to flip through the pages and see is it as simple as, like, you know, kind of like a kanji reference book for Japanese or character book for Chinese. Like, is it, you know, if the strokes are in this order or this many strokes, look at this one. Like, what's, you know, I don't really know how uh, an Egyptian hieroglyphic reference book would be laid out. Yep. So, in order to, to do that, uh, what I would have you do is actually do a, uh, likely a language roll. Um, or we can do something else in there. Because it, you're still going to need to go through and do some of the um, translation with it. And that's cool. assuming that the order and wording and things on that door are in fact 100% set to the same type of stuff that's going on in Egyptian. Right, right. So, yeah, um maybe what about like a library use just to sort of determine you know, if if this is a reference book in the way that makes sense in Clarence's mind, you know, that that could be recognized as such. Uh I would allow that for sure. Okay. Uh the only thing I've got is are you going to do that in the alleyway? Well, I it's, think if it's, that's what Clarence was suggesting, he'd be like, there's got to be like a diner or something around the corner. We can grab a bite to eat before we do anything else stupid. Yeah, I'm just, so this initial one, I'm just kind of thinking like, 
can I gauge how long it would take me to get a translation on what's on the door? Like if I flip through the book and like, oh no, this is like a textbook. I'm going to have to dig for the information. I'm going to need a few hours. Or is it like, let's grab a bite to eat. Let's grab a steak. Give me 30 minutes kind of thing. Um, You would definitely benefit from grabbing, you know, 30 minutes to do it. It is a fairly thick book. So if it's anything but exactly straightforward, it's probably going to take you a while. Okay. Yeah. Let's let's retreat for a moment. We know they're locked up. We think the door is either in one of two stores. And if it is in the bookshop, then uh, Mr. Matthews knows about us, knows about what we're looking for and won't let us back in there. So... I'm you know, not imagining that I'm going to need somebody's permission for what we're going to do next, but we yeah. have the the journal, so we should at least know positively which location or what location this door is in. Let's go do some referencing. Yeah, I'll get everybody to eat. So... Actually, I got the last one. It's your turn to pay. <sighs> you remember, you walked out, you rushed out after Miss Carmen, and I had to pay the debt. There were extenuating circumstances. I'm not blaming fine. you for it. I'm just saying it's your turn now. Fine, fine, fine. Um, so yeah, we're gonna go find the diner. Um, get a get a couple of plates, and I'll pull out the books. Um, and I think I don't have. I feel like I don't really have a language use that would be applicable here. So I'd like to lean into either library use or history, if I may. Uh, I could see either of those working for you. Okay, I'll go for library use then. Let's see what we get. Oh, jeez. The dice are not being <laughs> kind tonight, guys. Um, I'm going to push this roll because I I just, I'm so close. I feel real confident here. Okay. I don't think okay. we'll get a second. Can can I not use luck points on a pushed roll? Is that what that is? Yeah. You see, yep. you take it at face value? It's, it's, it's one or the other in, in 7th edition. You either spend luck or you push the roll we're gonna push the roll there's no way the dice would shit on me twice hey okay so we have a regular success i was definitely worried about the dice pulling the rug out i can't <laughs> believe you said that as you did that i was you are a brave man <laughs> <laughs> i was touching wood the whole time man i got a bookshelf right here for just such a purpose um <laughs> so <laughs> so yeah so we have a we have a regular success on the mm -hmm. push roll okay uh, so spending, you know, probably about a half an hour, 45 minutes with the um, hieroglyph book, uh, going through, looking at it, you, after about the half hour, 45 minutes, the symbols that are above that door are not matching up to how the book is looking at hieroglyphs. They're, they're just not matching up. There's something weird about it that doesn't conform to typical what you're getting out of this book like you don't you're just reading the book you know kind of at face value and there it's like you'd be looking for this type of stuff these type of hieroglyphs next to this and you specifically look up some of them that are on there and it's not it's not matching up it's it's really not uh, working well, for it well he's doing that i'll be uh one stuff in my face but otherwise um looking through the um rosicrucian manual and see if they have symbology in them that are egyptian in nature uh and you're not seeing any specifically in there okay and then uh the only thing i was mentioning was the um the saint maria the the primer just consuming that and whatever information's in that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah that's not it's not giving you specifically anything to do with the hieroglyphs on the door Okay, um, so going back over the the journal page with the door and the the symbols drawn over it, just taking a second look at this page and then taking another look at the page where Poppy talks about the door, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's just just kind of like re reviewing the facts as it were. Like, what do we know about the door? What do we know about the the lettering or or symbols over it? And then it's not matching up with Egyptian hieroglyphics. We've gone through the Rosicrucian manual and there's nothing in there that's referencing it. So um, how old 
is the, Paul, do you happen to know how old the um this whole Rosicrucian thing is? Does it date back to ancient Egypt? Is it completely separated therefrom? Would these symbols be linked to something else entirely? Or kind of being used like as a cipher by this religion because they chose it to be because they were after the Egyptians? Uh, Keeper, is, is Paul going to have any beat on that from what he's been reading? So, ask that again, I'm sorry. So, it's um, trying to get a sort of a historical placement to put a, a pin or a tick box in as to where the Rosicrucian um, order falls. I think Clarence is trying to figure out if the Rosicrucian order chose the hieroglyphics like as their code cipher, and that's why it would be linked to something that they're, it, in theory, that door belongs to the Rosicrucian order, right? That's what Clarence is thinking right now. So are those hieroglyphics actual Egyptian hieroglyphics? Or are they being used as a cipher by this order? Because this cipher actually existed after ancient Egypt. And they're like, we need a code language. Let's use this, but make it our own. So go ahead and give me an intelligence check. Because there's two things going on here that, that I can tell you about what's going on. But right. Why don't you both give me... All doing as well? Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Would that be an education or an, or an Straight intelligence. Straight intelligence. Connecting the dots. Okay. Damn. Hey, regular success for me. Yep. So both of you got an a success. So, so the one thing that springs to mind is I'll read you the um, passage from Poppy's journal, and it is on May tenth. She wrote. I've tried to draw the door three times now, and none of the sketches seem to do it justice. So that's that's interesting as you're, you know, you kind of, it's interesting that she couldn't draw it, and it's not matching up to any type of hieroglyphic um, language that, well, in Egyptian, it doesn't make sense, right? But she also yeah, she specifically was stated- to draw something that she couldn't get a grasp of potentially potentially the other thing is going through the the book the history of saint maria of the rose uh the one thing you notice as you start looking at it paul now that you're not you know threatening people and and upset at them <laughs> uh this is anyway this is written by luke matthews oh the, the primer they got is is written by matthews yep the primer uh, and the book outlines the history of a building believed to be a church that stood somewhere on the block where the flower shop and bookstore now reside. You, um, he believes that a small cottage on the block is the old church rectory. Uh, nobody knows who built the church nor why it was abandoned, but the book that Matthews wrote claims that an old man who was 384 years old, who lived in the cottage slash rectory, uh, told him the true history before dying. Uh, according to him, the church was built by Native Americans who worshipped Christ in 1500 as a way of blocking a passage to hell. Uh, once completed, they left the ancient man as a ward of sorts. Later settlers nicknamed the church St. Maria of the Rose for the Virgin Mary sculpture in an overgrown rose hedge around what they assumed was a graveyard. Um, and there's a lot of fanciful stuff here. And let me just make sure. But he argues in the book that while this seems fanciful, that it's true proof of the cosmos driven universe's preference for Christ's worship in the Rosicrucian style even going so far as to state that local magistrates' decision to not exhume the dead from the church uh, site shows powerful forces, positive hexes placed on the church in 1500 still stand today. And that's, that's what you get out of thing. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll like probably like talk to, um, to Clarence. Um, and I think like the first thing that like, rips him is so there was a connection between this rosy bookstore and something else it just maybe wasn't exactly what i was thinking it was it's all about the 
I'm reading this thing, uh, Clarence, and it's all about the the like cottage on the the same street, some sort of like ancient ancient. These guys don't know ancient, uh, ancient church. <laughs> uh, and he like like bylines the, the information that he's gathered. He's like, but they're claiming that it's a Native American church that's worshiping Christ back in the 1500s. But that's like a wolf. That's that's a real hard one to get to. I mean. Who's who's coming over here talking about Christ in the 1500s, huh? Yeah, this no. in Detroit. <laughs> I'm I'm picking up what you're putting down here. Um, that that sounds like something different, but I I don't know what. But that that well, it sounds like that's where the stuff is, though. Like that's if they got mm-hmm. lost in some like if they got this church and they would be digging around in catacombs. That's easy thing too. This could be not as big of a you know, weird old mystery. It could just be that they were excavating basically and got like something collapsed behind them or something. So, you know, it's uh, not that that's a good thing, but it's, you know, uh, it's it's not a Harold murdered them situation, but I mean, it could still also be that. So I, I think we should go take a look at this thing. Leaning towards a Harold murdered kind of situation, but, but, you know, there was also that line about how Mrs. Midweather uh, came in bragging that her son was a, a real shake who came back. Uh, from his studies abroad so you know there's um i don't know i don't know there's i feel like maybe harold got too big for his britches and poppy and cedric bit off more than they could chew there's this worry in the back of my mind about little pops but maybe we go and inform the authorities what if we brought the police in on a search that would also give us access to city records much faster than us just going to the city records or we could just kick down a door and head to a basement and see what we find. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure what you think the cops are going to do right now. Right now, we've got a girl who's been missing for a day. Uh, and, uh, you know, she's we, we got nothing right now. We're going to tell them what? We think that they went down and looked at some spooky uh, cottage thing, you know, and they're going to be like, okay. Yeah. And this this whole thing, is this book, this primary has got a whole thing about like this spot is sacred and the city won't touch it and they didn't exhume stuff from it and i don't think anybody wants anything to do with this i think that kind of bureaucratic red tape is actually going to take us a lot longer than anything else that we might try to accomplish then i guess we go take a look for a basement and see if we find the body is what it's sounding like i don't even morbid about it. it i've just got a real bad feeling about this hey you know i think uh you know, maybe that luck hasn't run out just yet. Hmm. No, it hasn't. It can't have. We're on the way, right? Exactly. I mean, <laughs> what kind of fortuitous nature it is to run into two of the most capable individuals in a random diner on that particular morning. <laughs> it definitely wasn't rigged. You're right. You're absolutely right. Um, Do we consider taking some sort of... uh? Political or no, not political. Um, democratic route, a delicate route in terms of entering a building, or should we just go and find a deserted building and see if it's got some stairs down here? My assumption is if that they're able to just randomly walk in there and look at this brick door whenever they kind of want to, that there's probably no one that gives a shit about this place. I'm gonna say it's the flower shop somewhere that they had access to, or it's gonna be one of the vacant homes on the block. Yeah, no, no, no. It's the, there's like a whole, there's a spot, there's a very specific spot that's been talked about in this primer of like, that's where it's believed to be. And uh, since it's probably unlikely to be in any currently occupied homes, I think, uh, I think we could probably find it pretty easy. I'm pretty sure we passed it, actually. And I'm pretty sure we probably got a picture of it right here. And he shows up the other journal page that has the rectory. Oh, oh, all right. Hey, was that the cottage in the vacant lot by that uh, rosy cross? Lorekeeper. Uh there was definitely a vacant lot and kind of a rundown cottagey type thing in the vacant lot. Yeah. Let's does go. It, does it resemble the uh drawing on journal page A? Journal page A. Let's go there. Just to make sure I am answering you correctly. Diary over there missing journal pages ah here it is uh journal page a it does look like it yes okay yeah i think um 
yeah so he's like like shakes that paper again just like it's got to be this one right she's she's been drawing specifically things that are related to her weird investigation so if it's this one that's that would make perfect sense she draws the house she draws the door she draws the whatever the heck crystal which you know i still maintain is your fault that is broken but whatever Hmm. don't no need to bring up old wounds let's go take a look at this rectory eh which you guys still have in your pocket by the way oh 100 now i think the only thing is like did we split the broken pieces or is it in one of our pockets (laughs) No, we we each t- no. I think you took him and shoved it in a pocket, or did we each take take one? We gotta. Let me see if I wrote that in my notes. I mean, because I could believe it either way. I, I believe a version where uh, Paul was like, "No, no, no, you keep half. You got to share this burden with me." Oh. And also, yeah, a version no, no, where no. Just, like, you had shoved thinking. it into the. You had shoved it into the closet, and then we decided to take it. So I went and got it out, and then you told me to carry it because it. Right. You're the one who took the hit, so it you were yep. like you were like no no you you hang on to that there. That's right. I remember now. Yeah. So yeah, you got it. I'm not pointing Shit. that out for any particular reason. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, burning a hole in my pocket. Mm-hmm. Let's go. Let's go see what this rectory looks like here as we lose the light, because that's when we want to go looking for a missing young lady. Oh God, yep. I'm too old for this shit. So you guys start heading, start heading down Saint Maria Street, going back, because uh, that kind of headed toward where the trolley drops you off, and you found there were some diners there uh, along that route. Um, you start heading down you know, Rose Court, and there's definitely some kids that live in the area, and as you guys start, you know, heading up to the the cottage, you know, one of the kids says, you know, stops you and says, uh, Mr., Mr., uh, both misters. That's a very astute of you. What do you want? Uh, we, we, I don't know if you want to go there. I don't, I don't know who you are, but I don't, I don't think you want to go near there. That, that place is haunted. Oh, uh, that's not not haunted out. No, nobody lives there, and and that's oof. I wouldn't go there if I were you. What have you What have you well, seen or heard that makes you know or think it's haunted? Well, you know, my one of my buddies uh, had had one of his buddies that uh, that heard some some strange stuff going on there. You know, th- through the years, it's it's you just don't go there. You seen anybody go there? Oh heck no! You're the first one I've seen like <laughs> look like they want to go there. I'm gonna pull out the wallet again and oh, slide man. him like a five dollar bill. Like you still didn't see nobody go there, did you? And just start walking towards the cottage. He'll look down. He'll take it. No, Mister. No, no. I certainly haven't. You have a good day. That's that's a good kid. You went along now, and uh, you know we don't gotta talk about this. And he goes. He goes skipping off. <laughs> Clarence so, is not amused. <laughs> so you you start approaching it, and it looks a lot like the picture. Uh, everything's overgrown. It's a small field stone structure with a sloping roof. Uh, its lawn is littered with wildflowers and marigolds. Their yellows seeming to fight with the fragile remains of gladiol's beds up under its front facing windows. A rambling rose not yet in flower has transformed the former chimney into a piece of living greenery. The door is closed as are dirty windows, um, but a quick check of the windows shows they're not locked, but rather painted closed due to lack of use and time. Hmm. Wow. Well, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. If the door is stuck, I guess we're crawling in through a window. Didn't think I'd see myself doing this again. Yep. I mean, I can uh, take down the door probably, but uh, yeah, windows is is easy too. I mean, is, uh, here's another thought, real quick, Clance. You know, we happen to have some idea that they have been coming in here. Maybe we scope the building out to see if there's something that's already open. Just gonna say, let's take a quick lap. And see if there's a, a spot that they've been using to go in and out. There must be some worn footprints or, or something around here that says they've been going in and out. All right. Uh, if you guys want to look for a footprints and that type of stuff, that would be a 
Isn't that natural 14? world? Or is there track? Uh, I suppose it would probably either be track, which is a skill, yeah. or spot hidden if they were like going through latches and stuff. Yeah, you could. I would see rolling either of those if you if you're more looking for footprints, uh, do a track. If you're kind of because I wasn't gonna look for footprints. I'm just like gonna check like all the doors, all the windows. Like there's just the, the, or if like there's a spot of the house that's like got a hole in it or like broken in some way already. Yeah, I'm definitely a spot hidden kind of guy, not a track kind of guy. All right, go ahead and so. give me a roll. Ooh. Ooh, yeah. Uh, extreme success for my spot hidden. Yep. Uh, you can tell uh, with a spot hidden that the front door uh, is locked, uh, but it does look like, uh, you know, a quick cursory look over there with those rolls. You do notice that it does look like it's been opened at some point, not like, you know, in the 1500s. Since then, it's definitely been opened and definitely within the last week. Oh, front door it is then here, Polly. Check that out. Look at the run marks there on the floor. And uh, Clarence will go up and, and give it a shove. All right. Uh, it is locked, so if you want to just beat the door down, go ahead and give me a brawl roll. It's locked. How how could they? How dare they? Uh... I don't suppose that's something that's in your wheelhouse, Mr. Uh, Sculptor. Skull, what you think the stone is wet and like clay? No, it's marble. Uh, and then Clarence is just gonna like you know lean on the door handle and lean into the door. Um, maybe more of a strength check than a brawl. I could go for that since it's uh, an older structure. You know, he's thinking maybe he can just sort of flex on the door a little bit and uh, regular success, okay? Uh, with that, you can pop the door open, it's definitely not. <laughs> it is not a sturdy door by any stretch of the imagination. It's definitely been weathered and uh, has uh, lost a lot of its strength. So you can just break the door down, and it literally breaks apart as you put your shoulder into it. All right. And, uh, Holy know, we definitely... shit, you got a little bit more going on for you than I thought. <laughs> I was just about to say, Clarence like, has an inward sigh of relief so that he doesn't, he didn't... Uh... Didn't fail to embarrass himself. Well. Yeah, exactly. exactly yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Man. So you guys uh, break down the door, uh, and what you walk into, you know, looks like a living dining room area. Um, there's definitely a table, some chairs, uh, kind of a cooking area on the right of the. The room there from the door you entered, um, and you entered from the south side in this picture. Uh, but you can definitely see down the hall. It is definitely darker out, so you're having uh, some trouble seeing in the house, for sure. The windows have, you know, they're just dirt encrusted uh, from years of never being cleaned. So, what are you guys looking for? What you doing? Is there a, like, my immediate question is, is, does everything look like it's covered in a layer of dust, or has there been any kind of um, recent disturbance? Like, is, are there books on the table, have the chairs been pulled out, or are there runs in the dust on the floor? And if it is super dark, um, I don't have a light on me. Do you, uh, do you, Polly? Uh, I do not. Now, um, I know that you at least got the lighter on you. You've done, uh, use that already, didn't you? Yeah, I'm thinking Clarence might, um, snap a do do a chair leg and drape kind of deal and light that up. Okay, so you basically make a makeshift torch. Yeah, just okay. so we got a little something more robust to work with, and he'll he'll rip off a couple extra strips of drape so he can keep that going without too much issue as we move through here. Okay, uh, so you you do that and you guys start searching around. So in terms of uh, dust on the floor and stuff like that, it looks like uh, there's been some some movement through here um there's nothing that you, from off of the the living dining room area and there is the kitchenette i missed missed a wall there so i apologize um but there's two doors down the hallway that you can see that both of them have kind of footprints that go into those areas okay okay 
Mm. Uh, I'm happy to just kind of move through the living dining. Like, I don't think I'm going to look too closely here. We we kind of know what we came for, and we kind of know that it's not going to be on the surface. So I don't know about you, Polly. You know, as I finish lighting up the torch, I feel like most of this surface stuff here is a waste of our time. We can give it a once over, though, if you like. Um, you know, like we could roll our spot hiddens here if, if you feel it's necessary, but I don't, I'm, I'm just not really feeling it. Yeah, I think um, Paul definitely gives it a once over, but he's like just looking for very specific things. Just um, uh, just basically see if there's anything that they ever use. Like we assume they passed through this room, but I'm wondering if they ever use this room, if there's anything left in this room of, of note of value. Like, is there a uh lantern or you know some sort of device in here already did they leave other books or papers in here yep a uh, quick cursory glance through the living room dining room area it does not look like anyone's really used that for much of anything uh at all recently like the table still has a bunch of yeah. dust on it it yeah. looks like that anybody who went through uh didn't I, I use it for anything so. i think so. it's just just yeah with clarence just sort of push through So you have uh, down the hallway, you have two doors, one on the right and one on the left. Which one would you like to go to first? I'll poke my head in the right door since that's uh, I'm a right handed guy. So we'll just start to head down that hall and just pop that door open, you know, lean in with okay. the torch. Yep. Yep. So opening that door, you open it up and it looks like it's a small bedroom. Um, there is a bed in here. And not a whole lot else other than that. Uh, the bed is broken down a little bit. It doesn't look like you'd really want to sleep in it at all. Mm. Does it look like there's like any personal effects in the room? Not particularly. This room looks a little cleaner than the rest of like like the living room, dining room area. It looks like the floor has been mostly... Um, doesn't look like it's been specifically swept clean. But it definitely looks like the whole room has been disturbed. Mm -hmm. okay uh as we're like walking through i just sort of like glance over at uh, clarence i'm like did i tell you that there was supposedly like a 300 plus year old man that had been living in here the what yeah, yeah, yeah it's the whole thing it's like uh he's uh 300 and something years old he's been planted here by the native american worshipers of this weird esoteric you know christian order and uh he's kind of like you know part of the whole spell stuff that's on this house it's all hibbly jibbly moogly oogly, but uh, you know that's that's what it says. So I was just wondering if like maybe this is where a three hundred year old man slept, which would be kind of interesting if you think about it. It's look, Paul. I'm gonna come completely clean here. My mentor had a thing for some of these old religions, the the occult, if we use such a bold term. But um, it some 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 of it some of it has some store in reality. But I really feel like the bulk of it is just, as you said, who 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 believe Googly or whatever you called it there. A 300-year-old man? Pull the other one. What's in the next room? Okay. Let's take a look. And I'll let go open the other room. Okay. Uh, give me a listen check in this room, if you would. Oh, God. Should have been listening the whole time. <laughs> We're gonna die. <laughs> Uh, wait, library. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I was gonna sorry. Say. I... <laughs> <laughs> we have to listen in a library, right? It's a, <laughs> a congruent skill. Uh, yeah, no. Okay. Uh, Paul, you hear something below you. Uh, when you say something below you, like, does it sound like something is moving below me and, like, on a floor below me or, like, just beneath the floor boards? Like, is there any way to intimate whether there is a sub-level or whether this is something, like, literally under our feet? Uh, it sounds uh, like there's something, like, a, a larger space below based on, you know, okay, the type cause... of sound, the echoing and stuff. Gotcha, gotcha, because if it was something literally below our feet, that would change the Paul's reaction. <laughs> Huh. Um, so he's just like, I think there's a, I don't know that we're entirely alone here, Clarence. Oh, good. How does Clarence take that? Um, you've, you've been mentioning that, you know, some of this stuff really freaks you out. You're in 
a building where you've now been told that a 300 year old man lives and it's dark you've got a torch in a, a broken down building and and paul looks at you and says i don't think we're alone um clarence i feel like he's he's a very grounded man uh you know working with stone day by day and and living hand to mouth as an artist so he tends to over rationalize so he says you know we don't think we're alone and he's like yeah i bet this place does have rats probably nibbling on the 300 year old <laughs> man's corpse jesus well, and uh, i mean that part of the whole thing is we're hoping that we're not alone because we're looking for human beings in particular yeah 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 uh, he'll push open the door on the left side of the hall before going to the the end of it there. What's across from the the bedroom? But he's. So, I think Paul, if you're looking, you probably see like the hand not holding the torch is shaking as it moves to push open the door. Um, I think, <clears throat> I think uh, Paul's gonna let you like open the door, and he's gonna sort of duck out of sight a little bit to like not be. Paul's wondering if this door leads to a stairwell down that somebody like that's his his line of thought is like there could be somebody down there at the bottom of a stairwell and this could be the door to the stairwell so i don't want to be seen even if clarence is so he's gonna like duck out of the side yep so you both kind of go to that other door basically Mm -hmm. so going into the other door you notice that it's a bathroom okay all right um yeah, and Clarence, you know, as he leans in and, and moves the torch left to right, he's like, yeah, see, bathroom, okay. And then... Um, oh, I didn't else... mention that I'm pretty sure it's not rats. I'm, you know, I'm not saying that uh, I have extra sensory perception or nothing, but uh, I think that there's a, there's a f- whole floor underneath us. There's something below. Like, there's a space below, which is sort of what we were assuming. Yeah, yeah, we were. We were. So maybe keep your voice down, huh? And he'll I'm look back at the end, the end of the hallway here. Um, is that a doorway or like a, a staircase circling out of our sight here? I see the little curve on the end of that hallway. Yep, that's a door that opens up. You can tell from the, the size of the house and everything, that would be one of the doors that goes outside. Oh, outside. Okay, all right. Yep, yep. Okay. Uh, so if there's something below... Uh, here, Polly. Then I think we have missed a trick. Uh, you know, let's back up here. the The bedroom looked like it had been touched. You think maybe there's a loose floorboard, or maybe there's a uh, something hidden under the bed? Oh, I mean, it's gotta be. It's classic, classic story stuff, right? Like this is how it goes. Yeah, I feel like Jack and the Beanstalk was doing some hiding under the bed at some point or other here. So let's go take a look back in that bedroom. So we'll, okay. uh, you know, I'll, I'll move back in there with the torch. Do you think that's like a spot hidden roll? There isn't like just a blanket search in, in this game. Nope. Uh, so going into the bedroom uh, and starting to look around, uh, you it doesn't take long to find exactly what you were thinking. Some loose floorboards, right? Ah. There's um, underneath the bed is actually where it is. So eventually, you know, once you're kind of zoned in on it, you look at the bed, you can tell that it's been moved. There's a little bit of not enough where a cursory glance, especially with a torch, would would show you. But as you're really looking for it, you can kind of tell that it's been moved. And you do find a a door and you dust it off a little bit because there is still a little bit of dust um, and find some nail marks on the edges of the boards, like someone pulling it up, you know, use their nails uh, to get it open Mm -hmm. and kind of scratched across it. Okay. All right, Paul, bingo. See, so yeah, we're not alone. There's someone down below. Maybe it's Poppy and this is all about to get buttoned up and there's nothing but kids fooling around after all. That's uh, that's the most ideal scenario. Okay. Yeah. You want to, should we grab a real light before we do this thing or is this torch working for you? Oh, I mean, you know, on a personal level, none of this is working for me. I hate this, but, uh, (laughs) you know, uh, we could maybe give that a shot. You know, there's probably uh, there's probably somewhere we could obtain something. You hear yeah. you hear a moan from below. Now both of you hear it. That's not good. Uh, Clarence yeah, Paul just like ahead. looks at at Clarence and is just like there's a look on his face of like 
I don't know if I signed up for this. Uh, yeah, uh, Clarence. I think I think they just share that exact. Say- it's a mirror, real quick. But Clarence <laughs> is gonna go ahead and peel that door up. Um, you know, he's he doesn't have kids, uh, but he's got his mom. So there's definitely like a family pull on the heart. And so there's this little girl missing, and or young mm-hmm. young woman missing. And so it's definitely like a, oh man, she she's in trouble. She needs help. There's a moan. Like it's just such an obvious uh, emotional. Yeah. heartstring tug so he, he's in it um paul's definitely like bef- as he's doing that like pops open his briefcase and pulls out like his own set of brass knuckles and like <laughs> puts it on and it's like something might need punching i don't know yet okay <laughs> you guys pull open the the door and kind of go down there's a like have you ever been in a house where it's like in between a ladder and stairs. So it's not like straight down for a ladder, but probably only like 30 degrees uh, to get down it and going down. Yep. And rickety is all hell. Like you're going on it. And the first step you take on it, you're like, we probably should only have one person on this. It's, (laughs) it looks like it'll come down if, if more people are on this Uh, and getting down about halfway with a torch, you in fact see a bound person down here and in fact as a quick glance it's definitely someone uh female okay well clarence will um i think i think that clarence is probably the type to you know he's gonna drop off the stairs as quickly as he can like and just go str- probably puts blinders on when he sees Poppy or when he sees this bound female and he's going to drop off the, you know, that super sloped like attic ladder, basement ladder dealio and drop down and head right over like, oh, my God, you know, OK, what? You you get to fluttering and work on fire. Yep. You both get down there uh, and you rush over to the bound person. It is, in fact, Poppy. And you know this to be Poppy. You immediately you know untie her and she's she's not in a great way she's not been specifically beaten up but you can tell that she's been down here a while you know probably for a couple days (laughs) which is about the time she's been missing Mm -hmm. uh and she's kind of muttering and she's she's like she looks like she has a recognition of who you are she's seen you at the diner you you both know her she knows you guys She's like, I, uh, Cedric, Cedric is back in the tunnels. Cedric is back in the tunnels. At that point, as, as she's talking, you both notice in this, in this dim light that's coming off this torch, uh, that's been burning for a little while now. It's starting to go down. It's, there's, the wall kind of next to you starts having something weird go on and out of it comes almost like an arm, like something, something really weird. And this thing comes out of the wall. It's, it's gigantic and a blasphemous form not holy ape and not holy insect it's hide hung loosely upon its frame and it's dead-eyed rudiment of a head sways drunkenly back and forth and its four paws are extended out with talons spread wide and its whole body was taut uh and it just it like an insect and ape type of thing and reaches between the two of you and grabs Poppy and pulls her back through the wall like it wasn't even there. Go ahead and roll me a sanity roll. Is there any kind of uh, physical reflex check to like have a hand on her? Or was I like not quite to her yet or had like just pulled her gag down or, or something like what? You know, is there something something here that I could try to intervene? It was very quick. Very, very quick. Uh, but go ahead and give me an, uh, a sanity roll, if you would. 
no, I'm trying to avoid that. I would like my sanity right where it is, damn it. <laughs> well, you just saw something come through a wall that is completely alien to anything yeah, you've ever don't, seen. Don't tell me again. Ugh. Oh, yeah. Um, okay, so we have a regular success on the sanity check. Oh, look at you, Paul. Hard as hey, nails. Hey. Ay, ay, okay. Ay. However, both of you are going to take one sanity damage from something phasing through a physically there wall. Ugh. And you're both Why? sitting there with the torch and like the bindings that Poppy had on her at your feet, staring at the wall of this monstrous thing that just came through. And that's where we'll end it for tonight. Ah. <laughs> You mean I don't get to punch mm. things? Well, if you'd I been gave... faster. <laughs> I'll just punch you, Gabe. <laughs> so I think <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Yep, and we'll we'll pick it up next time from there. Uh we're a little bit over our normal time, but thank you everybody for watching. Uh just as a heads up to everybody who is in fact watching. Uh, I will be out for next two and a half weeks, uh, so there won't be uh, any role-playing the next two Mondays, uh, but look forward to, I think it is the 10th, 11th, what day is that? Uh, the 11th, uh, we should be back on as long as everything matches up for, for all the players. We'll either be doing riffs again, or we'll continue on with some Cthulhu. Any closing thoughts from Clarence or Paul before we, we wrap up here? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I need a stiff drink and to unsee all of that. <laughs> Holy smokes. Oh, yeah. I think uh, I think based on the, the pure, uh, the, the setting and then like the extreme success sanity roll, just like smack Clarence and was like, you let her get away. Hey, what the hell? Um, yeah, like almost grasping for some, some Abbott and Costello, like slapstick, like rational grounding w within that moment. Um, yeah, I think Clarence is just kind of like, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah like, Paul is shaken, but he's still just like, like that's, this is him rationalizing. He's just uh, like, oh, okay. That happened. That's terrifying. But, uh, furthermore, let's focus on what you did wrong. Right. <laughs> you. You saw her, right? And you saw that thing? Yeah, I guess we'll, we'll learn more about that next time. Yep. 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 Just awesome. kind of leave it there. Questioning the sanity. <laughs> Sounds good. Well, thank you, everybody, and we'll catch you later. Have a good Thanks, night. Streamers. Good night to all. <laughs>